The Bronze Horseman sculpture of Alexander Archipenko has emerged into public knowledge from near oblivion over the past 10 years. The art historians no longer dare deny its existence. The surfacing of this bronze sculpture elevates the role of Archipenko in world sculpture to the highest level. The Horseman is the sole remaining piece of art that records the cubist line of Archipenko's work. The sculpture was created using unique moulding and soldering techniques that were only available to European moulding masters in the late 19th and early 20th centuries. The proportions and brave structure of the sculpture represent an unrepeatable intellectual self-realization in the art of Archipenko. During his years in America, Archipenko never managed to recreate this unique artistic style. Archipenko's Horseman is one of the lucky pieces of art that has not become the victim of mass production of boring copies. The sheer existence of this unique sculpture elevates it to the rank of a masterpiece by Archipenko. The artistic work of Archipenko can be divided into three periods. During his European era in the 1910s and 20s, he stood out as a genius of his time with his new views, shapes and ideas. The Horseman is an intellectual masterpiece of this era. His second period began with his emigration to the United States and lasted until his death in 1964. During these years, his work can be characterized by being spent and barren. He mostly worked on the recreation of pieces from his European period that had disappeared or had been destroyed. His new pieces of art like the Queen of Sheba and King Solomon were just grey shades of his pristine brilliance. It is often mentioned in professional lectures that Archipenko is the Picasso of 20th century sculpture. The main difference between these two geniuses though is that while Picasso was the creator of the spirit of the age himself, Archipenko was created by the spirit of the age. This fact is justified by his spent and less original work in America. The third period of his work is often called the Grey Era, when museums were flooded by Archipenko copies that created the foundation of a closed, vertical and horizontal business cartel system that ignores universal trademark protection and floods the artwork market with mold copies. The work of Archipenko is degraded to cheap, mass-produced items by this mercantilism but the horseman counterbalances this as a rider of the apocalypse. Most of the pieces of work of Archipenko became the victims of the cultural destruction of the Nazis. His horseman sculpture may have escaped this fate thanks to its anonymity. It is now our task to replace this sculpture into the works of Archipenko and the art of sculpture of the world. The arch of movement of the two sculptures, Duchamp's horse and Archipenko's horseman, their common technique of energetic momentum gives foundation to the idea that Archipenko might have known the work of his fellow sculptor and it influenced him. The Horseman is part of the Sharansky collection, a 20th century art collection created by my uncle, Paul Sharansky. He was a famous violin maker and had many contacts in the art world. He was the owner of the Horseman, which he gave to me in the 1980s. Paul Sharansky died in 2000. The sculpture survived two world wars and the hardships of communism. In those days, in Hungary, as in other countries of Eastern Europe, it was perilously risky to possess a valuable work of art as a private owner. My family preserved this sculpture by keeping its existence as a secret. During the years from 1913 to 1919, Archipenko participated in several art exhibitions of Art House Budapest. 
He had close connection with Hungarian avant-garde artists like László Moholy Nagy, Joseph Csáki, Lajos Kossák, Béni Ferenci. Ma, meaning today, a periodical edited by Lajos Kossák also featured works of Archipenko in 1921. The avant-garde sculptures of Archipenko use cubist shape elements like convex and concave surfaces, square arches, an asymmetrical half-side torso body and the sphere, which also characterise our horseman statue. These elements were first applied in sculptures by Archipenko. Spheres and square arches are part of the Carousel Piero. The convex and concave surfaces appear on the woman combing her hair and on the walking soldier. The blue dancer's body, balanced on a single point of support, is a characteristic feature that is also applied on the horseman. The horse and rider one-body conception, combined with visible feeling from what is invisible, is the same solution as in the case of the gondolier, one body with the O, the carousel Piero, one body with the carousel, the seated geometric figure, one body with the wheel. The horseman sculpture has been submitted to objective material examination by the Brussels Art Laboratory. The examination provided unquestionable proof that the statue was made in the 1910s. The laboratory also examined what kind of technology had been used to make the signature. They have found that the signature is totally comparable with the ones on Archipenko's other sculptures. The seated concave, in particular, has the same signature as the horseman. This sculpture is registered by the Solomon R. Guggenheim Museum in New York. I discovered an archive photo of this sculpture in a Fabergé documentary, Fabergé, A Life of Its Own, made in 2015, which I recently saw on German television. The image appears in the film together with the works of Zatkin, Malevich and Popova as an outstanding representation of the Russian avant-garde. Forming and shaping a horse is the greatest challenge for an artist. As Raymond Duchamp Villon was able to represent the strength and workability of the horse as the engine of the industrial and war machine, Archipenko captured the thousand-year-old intellectual, spiritual and physical partnership between the horse and the man in a glorious arch. The spirituality of Archipenko was able to capture and represent that was desired by the art for thousands of years. By representing the coexistence of spirit and form so brilliantly, Archipenko presented an irreproducible gift to the world that is unique in the history of the art of sculpture. Mm -hmm.